Hello, everyone, and welcome to Therapy for Nerds. Today, it is just myself, Cassidy Russell, and... Abby Ronquillo. And Katie decided to bow out because we are talking about something that she... A fandom that she is not a part of. And that is okay. We all have our fandoms. But the Pokemon fandom is definitely one that is near and dear to my heart and <laughs> one that I have been a part of for the most part since I was a small child. I, I did have my middle school phase of rebelling against it, but I was drawn back into the fold, and now I am in it more than ever. I'm looking across the way, and I have my Pokemon blanket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in my office, but I have my, my Alolan Vulpix plushie. And so I thought it would be really fun to do some psychoanalysis on our favorite Pokemon, because I think... A person's favorite Pokemon says a lot about them. And we could even break this down to like your favorite starter and your favorite like overall type of Pokemon because again, I feel like that also says a lot about you. So Eevee was my first favorite Pokemon for the wrong reasons, I guess, because when I was <laughs> during the first, you know, the first wave, I had a crush on this guy in the third grade and his favorite Pokemon was a Vulpix. And I was like, okay, I'm going to pick a Pokemon that kind of looks like Vulpix so we can like talk about it. And I was like, oh, Evie kind of looks like Vulpix. <laughs> so, like, we can bond about that. But then it kind of backfired in my face because he was like, hey, you're just copying me. Like, <laughs> that's, like, kind of like Vulpix. And I'm like, oh, my bad. I guess you're right. But then I ended up really liking it because I was like, oh, Evie's pretty cool. You can do so many things if you just have this little stone thing. So, so is Evie yeah. your favorite? Evie is one of my favorite Pokemon but not my favorite favorite. What is your, okay, so we're going to start the psychoanalysis of oh, okay. favorites. So what is your favorite? Okay, my favorite Pokemon is Jirachi. Jirachi. Ooh, <laughs> Jirachi. That's also my favorite Pokemon movie is the one mm. with Jirachi. I'm trying to think if I saw that one or not. I've seen like most of them. Yeah. I haven't seen all of them, so I guess yeah. I can't say it's like the, the best one. Um, but there's a pretty catchy song in there. Like, it's called Jirachi's Lullaby. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe that's why I like, I like the movie. Maybe. Pretty cheesy. <laughs> but no, okay. So I, I can work with this, because Jirachi is, like, not just a, a legendary Pokemon. What's, what's the term for... Oh, I should know this. It's not just the... For... Well, there's like a there's like a subset of legendary Pokemon. Like Mew is a part of it. Uh, Cerebi is a part of it. Um, oh, I don't know what that is. Uh, like it doesn't the fact that it doesn't like evolve. You mean? Well, the the fact that there's it's like covered? well, the fact that it's like it's a, it's a mythical Pokemon. Oh, mythical. mythical Pokemon. And so, Jirachi is a really interesting choice. It's, I mean, it's a cute, it's very cute, and then it's a wish-granting Pokemon, mm -hmm. which I feel like says a lot about you and your character, mm -hmm. and wanting to be able, this fits in really well for being a therapist, <laughs> wanting to grant other people's wishes and make them happy. Yeah, um, I won't spoil the movie for you, but, um, like, there's this, like, whole theory about, like, Jirachi, I don't know, like, how much, in, like, if you played a game of Jirachi, like, shows up or whatever, but basically, mm -hmm. like, Jirachi wakes, wakes up, like, every millennia or whatever, and, like, mm -hmm. he's in the movie and he wakes up, so then you get to, you get to make a wish or whatever on, mm -hmm. on Jirachi. Um, so, like, I really like that idea of, like, oh, he only comes out once in, like, forever, and then mm -hmm. he's, like, unique I guess in that sense um and then like he's also very ditzy in the movie like just like kind of like a baby like doesn't know anything because he's like never awake almost like the avatar like kind of like curious child of like no 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 sense of what the world is um which is just very precarious and I really like that too um also he's cute I think a lot of the <laughs> a lot of my because I don't play the games very often Mm -hmm. A lot of the, my, like, basis of liking Pokemon is aesthetics. I mean, I, I play the games and my mm -hmm. basis is aesthetics. I, mm -hmm. Partly because I don't play competitively. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister has done some, like, battles online and stuff, and she has the patience for it. Because I, I tried in X and Y when they made um, the 
EV points easier to do and to figure out. I, I tried to make a team and I just failed. I feel like Jirachi stems from this, this desire to take care of others. Mm -hmm. I think so too, yeah. And like also <laughs> in the movie, like, because you know, like he only wakes up for a certain amount of time, he also goes to sleep. So I'm like, oh, that's like me. Like, I just want to make people happy and then go to sleep after. <laughs> And considering how overworked and chronic yeah. tired therapist done <laughs> I just never realized like how relatable like Jirachi was. I just I I mean number one, it's like mm -hmm. he's cute and then I like the movie, but then you're you're right, there's probably a lot more like psychoanalysis attached to like why we like certain things or we're drawn to them. Mm -hmm. And I've done yeah. trainings yeah. on that. Sorry, you go. No, go ahead. No, I was just curious too, like and like I saw, I think Jirachi is like much later in one, two, three, the fourth generation. Yeah, I think so. Or something. So like, I'm I'm really I was surprised that like it wasn't something because I'm very like tied to like nostalgia, like obviously and like what do you call that sentimentalism and stuff. And like, yeah, Jirachi is not very sentimental to me at all. Like, it's not like someone gave me something Jirachi or like there's probably there's not even that much Jirachi merchandise at all. So really? in Japan, Jirachi, Jirachi wasn't like a very big, not one of the big hitters, I guess, or whatever. So it was very interesting that like that was something I was drawn to. No one ever talks about Jirachi or anything. But I was curious, I was going to say, I, ha I was going to try to guess if like your favorite Pokemon was something from like your childhood or like when you were an adult or like an adult, I guess. My favorite Pokemon has stayed my favorite Pokemon since the beginning. Yeah, from the beginning. That's why I figured. Yeah. I feel like it's something that, like, you know how they had that feature where you could, like, move your Pokemon yeah, the old game or whatever? I feel like it's one of those. Like, maybe one that you, like, had for a long time or, like, you really bonded with. I honestly don't... I don't carry Pokemon over to the new generation. I always start fresh. It's always just seemed like a pain in the butt to transfer them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm too lazy for that. I mean, they were in the anime and fairly prominent in the anime. And definitely, like, after I saw that, they were my favorite forever. But it's also just, like, I have a very... I'm normally into fire-type Pokemon. Mm -hmm. like, that is my primary. Okay. I say this even though my favorite starter is actually Bulbasaur. Mm -hmm. But there's a <laughs> good reason for this. I originally were, like, when you were picking your the three first starters... I could not in good conscience pick Charmander uh -huh. because I could not in good conscience make sure that his tail never got wet. Oh. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> and so I didn't want to be the reason why my Charmander died. <laughs> and that is why I could never. <laughs> yeah, you're like, let me just pick something where I wouldn't kill it. <laughs> and then I picked a plant, which is ironic because I kill all my plants. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm typically, like, growing up, I was always like, yeah, I'd be a fire-type gym leader and, and all that. Mm -hmm. So can you guess what my favorite Pokemon is? It's not a fire-type? It, it, fire it is type? a fire-type. Is it Charizard? No. I have no idea what your favorite Pokemon is. I know you, like, nope, I actually don't know. Growlithe? No. I don't know. What is your favorite Pokemon? And I had I had the stuffed animal of the Alolan version in my office. Oh, Vulpix! It is Vulpix. Yeah, I was thinking about it, and I was like, because I was like, because you, I know you have one, and I was gonna say, I know you have the, but then I was like, no, that's too obvious. I, I this wasn't <laughs> supposed to be a trick question. I thought it was like one of those like, the, uh, see, that's what they say, kids. Always go to your first answer. Don't like try to put your, don't erase your your first answer. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to start hating me, too, because you think I copied you? No, like, my sister's first? favorite Pokemon is Eevee, so no. <laughs> <laughs> that's At least so I funny. think that's still her favorite. It, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think if she might have changed. It, she's definitely more of like a, she's a normal slash fairy type uh, mm -hmm. person and gym leader. So. Is, is Sylveon her favorite um, Eevee Lucian? Um, hmm. I don't actually know. Mm -hmm. It might be, I think it's up there. 
aesthetically, I think the cutest one is probably Flareon or Vaporeon, mm -hmm. but I think the most strongest one is probably Umbreon or Glaceon. I think Umbreon's pretty popular. I mean, it depends. It depends on what you want and what you need mm -hmm. and what game you're playing. I mean, early days of Pokemon Go, Vaporeon was the most powerful Pokemon for a while. That was fairly easily obtainable, but then. If you're looking for like a defensive tank, then Umbreon is definitely your way to go. Mm. Really depends. I don't Baltics. Know. Mm, Baltics. Let me think about this. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like Vulpix, just like looking at a Vulpix, it looks like a very, like you wouldn't know it's a fire type by looking at it. It's just like a very timid, very like soft spoken, the doughy eyes. <laughs> but then it opens its mouth and it's like a powerhouse, which. I feel like in a way it's like very like similar to your personality because like I feel like you're a, not that you're mean like but you're very like <laughs> compassionate and sweet and very kind but you know you're very good at advocating for other people and also yourself like when it comes if <laughs> someone messes with you then you know then you're then they mess with you and like it's not okay.